Baptist Church, our Wednesday night prayer time and uh, Bible study. We've, uh, we've just discussed that we've got a, a smaller number than usual, but uh, with 4th of July coming up real soon and, and uh, middle of summer, it's, folks are traveling, folks are on vacation. I know some of our regulars are. I saw some uh, video of them uh, being shot through a slingshot and screaming and crying and passing out and Praise the Lord, they all used proper language, and so that was good, and uh, just about, they didn't. They just, they just rolled their eyes in their heads, all kinds of good stuff. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. I, they may be watching tonight, so I won't, tell, I won't tell who that was. That was one of our children and his mother, and they just did a, they, just, they posted it on Facebook, and it was a funny video. He was a nervous wreck. He'd about, he'd about worked himself into a frenzy before he ever took off and uh, but he was having a good time with it before it was over I think but we do have a lot of folks traveling and we I think we may even have some folks come in a little bit late tonight it's hard to get in sometimes when the sun's shining and work to be done and, and things of that sort so uh, but we do have uh, folks coming in and we're just we're just thankful and glad that you're here and those of you on Facebook I hear more and more every week of people who say, you know, I'm, I'm turning in, tuning in to Facebook. 25 last week. Praise the Lord. What a great. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And so we're glad that you're here, whether in person, whether uh, online. We're just tickled and, and glad that you're with us. Uh, let, me, let me go over some of the prayer requests that we have that we know about uh, some are events that that are coming up and uh, we're just excited about them um, our, one that comes to mind first and foremost and we're gearing up for it and if you were here you would see uh, those online those of you that are here you, you walk down the halls you can see it's already beginning to just, just look a little bit, smell a little bit like Vacation Bible School. You know, you, you hear it, and, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, that's coming up June the 10th through the 14th. We're excited about that. We're excited about Family Day at the uh, start of the next week on July the 17th. And we're going to be going over to, uh, over to the uh, pavilion across the way over here at Wing Deer Park and uh, having a picnic time and plan is to have a baptism and so we're just excited uh, about that and and uh, being able to minister to those families and uh, so you all be praying for that pray for those little children that'll be here uh, as I said last week some will be our children some of our children have just not reached the age yet where they've accepted the Lord who knows this might be the time there'll be children from other churches and there'll be children from no church whatsoever. And uh, we just pray that the Lord touch their little hearts. My brother said uh, one time many years ago, and I, I thought about it often, and, and I don't disagree with him. He said, you know, uh, we sometimes question when children give their heart and life to the Lord. And he said, uh, Really, it's so easy for a child. He said, I believe this is what Jesus was talking about. He said, a child already puts all of their faith and their trust into somebody else anyway. And to ask them to give it, their, put that same faith and trust into Jesus is not a great stretch for them. For those of us who are independent and work a job and make our own way, that's the ones it's tough for. Those children already rely on a mom and a daddy, and it's tough for them. Uh, or, or it's not tough for them it's easy for them to say I trust in somebody I'll trust in Jesus and, uh, so what a great opportunity I, I am so thankful that I was saved I believe the very first time that Jesus knocked on my heart's door I was in the right place I had been raised in church and I'm I, and boy I have failed him so miserably but I was I, I answered his prompting as a very young boy because I was in church and so what a uh, what a great opportunity for us 
So uh, I want to mention that. Also be praying for a mission trip opportunity. I don't know that a lot of folks are going to have the opportunity to go because of the timing. I know a lot of our uh, folks that have gone on mission trips in the past are involved in the education system. So uh, August the 1st through the 6th, that is uh, that might be the time we would want to go on a mission trip to a foreign foreign place as we're dealing with kids coming back but uh, we can't do that but August the 1st through the 6th if you're available I encourage you to consider that we have the opportunity to travel to Clintonville Wisconsin and apparently that's near Sheboygan uh, mission team will be doing construction work and prayer walks and prayer meetings and the trip cost is about five hundred dollars and so Matthew Powell is kind of uh, helping with that and so I want to ask you to be praying uh, be praying for that also be praying for this Sunday uh, we are going to be blessed to hear from an international mission board missionary out of Southeast Asia and um, we we will not all you folks on Facebook uh, you need to make note we will not be broadcasting the missionary as he speaks because he'll be speaking about his particular place in Southeast Asia he is in a place that is uh, so volatile that it, they just don't want his name shared and associated with what he's doing there uh, and, and they just have to be cautious with that uh, you know, it's not like, you know, if I tell you where I'm at, I have to kill you kind of thing. It's nothing quite that drastic, I don't think, but they do want to protect him and his family as much as is possible. So Sunday, uh, we, our worship time will be uh, streamed, but outside of that, we will not be, uh, we, we will not be uh, uh, broadcasting a, the sermon time. But the young man is Daniel McNeil. I can share that. Daniel and his family attended Mountain View Baptist Church, and so he grew up here. And uh, so I'm excited to hear. And he went over just as COVID was hitting. And so he's had a double hard and difficult road. And so uh, he and his family, of course, are learning the local language, and that's always, they say, just a tough part of it. But I'm looking forward to hearing from him. He's going to have some videos and slides and telling us uh, what all God's doing over in Southeast Asia. Y'all be praying for Katie Fair. Uh, boy, Katie has already just taken off. And I told her, I said, girl, you're just two days in, but you are doing a great job. And uh, I just, you know, I when you have anybody that does that good a job, you just, you, you hate to, hate to jinx it but you'd like to say now or you are coming back tomorrow right you know uh she hope, hope she if she can just tolerate the the boss she'll be fine and uh she it, 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 he's not if he ain't here and that's the biggest thing uh he's not hard to work for if, when he's not here it's just when he is here is the problem but uh you all be y'all be praying for katie and uh, I, she just she just has a, a last uh, well Monday Monday she kind of come in and she had big eyes looking like you know all right but she was just she she really didn't seem overwhelmed at all I come back in here today and and man there's emails popping out early this morning asking questions and she come in here and she had a big smile and and as a young mother. Uh, I think Owen being happy here at this daycare uh, when she met uh, uh, when she met Sherry, I, I seen a I almost I could almost visibly see a weight lift off her shoulders just because Sherry's just such a, a a great daycare director and Sherry had come up and and uh, she said can I have him can I hold him and she just she just loves babies and so I think I think everything's going to work out just perfect there would you be praying for Katie as she's you know I know you all if you've ever changed jobs moved jobs learning the ropes is some of the toughest stuff and so I've just been encouraging her saying look you can't mess it up no worse than I've got it so 
you just you just do what you want to do and and if Penny don't like it she'll let you know so uh, you, you, <laughs> I'm just kidding Donna uh, and and well, you know we, we she really does we do give her a lot of freedom in, in that role because uh, a lot of ministry there so uh, y'all be y'all be praying for she had never used a folder uh, that that folds these things and and most of us have not I showed her that thing and she said oh my goodness that is nice so uh, that's that's good. Um, be praying for our new member class uh, we've offered this thing now for several years just every few weeks and we have several new folks in there and I'm just uh, extremely excited about it and uh, one of the biggest classes we've ever taught. We've had to bring in extra chairs uh, in that new member class. We always have good numbers, but it's just been exceptional. And so you be praying for those people attending that, that God would show them whether they need to be members here. Some of them have already joined, and uh, but we need to be need to be praying for for those in there. Uh, coming up here in few weeks we'll be beginning our experiencing God Bible study I'm looking forward to that I actually had expected that to start sooner but with all of the stuff that's happening this is just when it's hit so uh, y'all be praying for that and what a what a great time we're gonna have there I believe um, do what it's a 12 week yeah it's a big one it's a big one um, so if I can talk fast, maybe we can cut it down to 10 or 8. Who knows? But uh, I, I, I don't know that anybody want to cut it down. I really think it'll be that good, and folks will just enjoy it. Uh, I hope. I pray. It might. It might work out just well. It might work out well. Um, so keep in mind... Uh, you know, I know we don't want to stifle what our ladies' ministry or our men's ministry has done, but keep in mind, Peggy Lanson was the one that asked me to do this, so uh, I have to. I hope I may remind her of that, because I know she'll be wanting to uh, get back into the ladies' ministry, and and we will do that real soon, I'm sure. And, well, it may be. We'll see. We'll see. Well, yeah. I'm not even going to talk about it. There's, there's nothing I can say that would help us, gentlemen, at this point. Uh, so... Um, those are all events that we're praying for. Uh, there's some others. I know that some things that are being considered. I know that uh, the mission committee's talking about whether or not we're going to be a part of the Good, Samar Good Samaritans backpack giveaway. It's changed so much that we just don't know if that's what we're going to do. Uh, so, you know, just be be praying for for that. Um, as far as people that we know to be praying for uh, I'm sitting here thinking about Sandy Sandy did you ever hear anything okay Bronchoscopy, yeah, and I and I, I imagine that means the scope of your bronchial stuff, which, uh, but saying all that is not real easy for me. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not in medicine, more than one. Uh, but yes, thank you, Sandy. Praise the Lord that we're still optimistic that there's no. No news is good news, I think one of you said Sunday, and so that's that's still where we are. Um, keep praying for keep praying for Sandy. I also want to ask you to uh, continue to remember 
Margaret Cameron. Uh, uh, Brother Cameron, you know, they've, they've kind of kept things quiet a little bit. But uh, he did share with me. He said it was a rough weekend for them. Um, it does not look like she's going to be able to uh, withstand the chemo. Her hemoglobin dropped very, very well to zero. And uh, so they, they're on med she was on medication. They're hoping to get it back to two by tomorrow. And I asked him, I said, what's it supposed to be? And he said, I don't know. But at two, uh, they felt like she could maybe get out a little bit. And he said, uh, he just made the comment. He said, she's 88 years old and weighs 90 pounds. It's hard to take chemo. I've seen my wife. Some of you, many of you may have dealt with that. It, it, it takes the strong down and someone that feeble. So you be praying for Margaret Cameron and uh, uh, just just continue to, to pray the Lord's will. And that's what Brother Cameron said they were praying. Uh, continue to remember, uh, I think, Barbara had mentioned her, but a good friend of ours, a neighbor of mine and Penny's, a member at Ingham Baptist, Brenda Johnson, uh, continue to uh, to pray for her. Uh, we want to uh, want to pray for Stephen Harvey. He's gone. He got an MRI and and it showed nothing, and so they're still wondering what has caused the the seizures that Stephen has. Um, we've had several who have had COVID. Uh, it looks like we've got several that are coming out that are bouncing out of it. And so we give the Lord praise for that. And uh, as we get to see them hopefully come back and, and uh, get, uh, get back plugged in here at church. Um, and, you know, we, we all kind of, matter of fact, first thing we did tonight, we asked if there was any good videos uh, but uh, and, and Chloe said no he just act like he normally does but Ira Bales has just had his wisdom teeth out and you know that's uh, uh, that's uncomfortable uh, and so you be praying for Ira as uh, I can uh, I say uncomfortable downright painful can be and so you be praying for Ira um Matthew Evans, your great aunt. Any? Okay. Well, praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good news. You know, and, and even as we pray for God to heal these sicknesses and illnesses, you talk about helping can green beans, that's work. You know, and uh, praise the Lord if you can do those things and enjoy some of life, we, that, that, that's, a, that's a praise in itself. So, uh, yeah, we want to, want to uh, praise the Lord for that and uh, continue to pray for her. We, uh, I'm looking here over my list. Uh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Penny, share, share that. I know some of our ladies already know, but what a fiasco it sounds like.
answered out. Amen. That's what Bill. That's what Bill kept saying. Yeah, yeah keep. Sure. Amen. Um, we've got several on the list that uh, that we know that are lost. We're praying for those lost children that'll be here at Vacation Bible School. But mercy, mercy. As I think about the sermon that I even preached Sunday about us being Great Commission Baptists, what we're called to be, Great Commission Christians, uh, people that are going and as we go, winning lost people. And uh, we face them all the time. Um, and, you know, sometimes that, that takes time to build up a relationship to be able to talk to somebody. There's a young man that's been doing some work at my house uh, for the last several weeks and uh, really don't know him. Uh, there's actually a couple and uh, I would guess that neither of the two that I'm thinking of are Christians. Um, both of them work for Christian men but uh, one of them today uh, just began to loosen up and talk to me for the first time and several days kind of joked with me and kidded with me and uh, he overheard me telling Noah that I was going to need to give him a little spending money and he hollered from the next room he said when are you going to give me my spending money I said I'm giving it to Rob a guy he works for and uh, but this young man I overheard some of the stuff that he's dealing with and uh, he's an ex-wife and a child and just court stuff and, and custody and child support and just dealing with, with life stuff that's difficult for him and, you know I'm thinking today I thought you know this may open a door for me to be able to share the gospel with this young man and so uh, I think of him I think of the people that I mentioned the ones uh, the ones that I work with, uh, that I've shared many times, uh, Brent, uh, I think about these young boys that have worked for me. Uh, some have attended this church, been here at different times. I feel like those doors will continue to open. I think some of those young men will be back. And uh, I just, you know, I just... I just pray to the Lord to let me be a little bit a part of seeing them saved. Let me have the opportunity to just see it. I, I don't have to be the one to lead them to the Lord. I, I'd just like to hear about it. I'd like to, I'd like to know. There's nothing any more rewarding. I had a young man come to an open house at our school. He had graduated two years earlier. And he came to me and he said, uh, Coach, how's everything going? I said, good, good. He said, class is good, yeah. He said, well, I stopped by. I wanted to just kind of see how things were going. And like I say, he's two years out of high school. And he said, but I also wanted to let you know that I surrendered my life to the Lord. And uh, I just thought you'd want to know that. I mean, it's probably not appropriate to shout in the middle of a high school during an open house and so I didn't but inside I was uh, just praising the Lord for that young man and you know I just pray that for you as well that you will have that opportunity to share your faith share the gospel for somebody to come back because you see that's when that seed you see it that young man I didn't get to lead him to the Lord but he and I had talked about the Lord he knew where I stood he knew what I believed and uh, he had asked me and for him to come back he recognized that it was important so that's what I pray for our church that's what I pray for our church um, we've got a lot of stuff to pray for 
as Southern Baptists, as Christians. Let, let me just say this uh, Roe versus Wade being overturned is a is a win for Christians who who recognize that heartbeats are stopped, yet at the same time, uh, this has not made anything legal. It's just shifted where it's at, and uh, or, or illegal for that matter. Uh, we've still got work before us, and as I said Sunday, you know, if we're going to if we're going to hold to a pro-life stance, it means more than a bumper sticker. It means for us to to recognize how we can help. I said, and as I say that, I look at Vilma, who works at a children's home, uh, and uh, you know, those are uh, those are things that we have to understand. And 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 like I say, our church is full of teachers. Who else putting time into children with families and children without families? So we've uh, we've got our work cut out for us uh, in, in in that. I met today with a bunch of preachers as we went had a had a breakfast with Dr. Randy Davis, who is the executive director of the Tennessee Baptist Mission Board. And we've talked about uh, there's there's been a lot of splintering and a lot of political mess, mumbo jumbo. That's happened at the Southern Baptist Convention. I, I've, I've said it. I've, I've made it a joke, but it, it, it really is true. People say, "What would you be if you wasn't Southern Baptist?" I said, "Well, I'd be ashamed if I wasn't Southern Baptist." But uh, can I tell you, um, in in while that is is true and funny, um, the Southern Baptists have have had all kinds of issues that have popped up, and somebody brought to the attention of all of us today the, as, as Dr. Davis says the, the tip of the spear for Southern Baptist is here, the local church most of that political mumbo jumbo a lot of that this, this committee or that committee or this uh, research or this uh, whatever really doesn't mean anything here what, what matters is us being Great Commission Christians. And, uh, and I love that, that attitude. But we do need to be praying for other churches, recognizing that it's not all about Mountain View Baptist. It's a kingdom work. So those are the prayer requests that I know of and have. What others do you have tonight? Yes, I, I I forgot to mention him. I let read right over it. I'm sorry. Does anybody know about? And I'm not. Uh, we we want to pr continue to pray for him. Does anybody know about Molly Dyson's grandmother, Cynthia's mother? Well, you know, we've missed it. Cynthia was so faithful, and buddy, it, you know, when that took place, so. Oh, boy. It's tough, yeah. Robert Woody, her, uh, I don't have her name, I just know it's Molly's grandmother. others tonight Jim how's your how's your eyes <laughs> attaboy right on cue well praise the Lord they're getting better good yes as they're traveling they're uh, uh, that's right uh, Sean Sean lost his Sean lost his stepfather and uh, I just love that testimony that he shared that he did know the Lord. And so um, we're thankful for that. And, of course, they're traveling and going to Ireland. And uh, so we just, we just praise the Lord for that. And uh, so we'll uh, want to pray for them as they travel. Huh? 
Yeah, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Any other prayer requests tonight? Yes, sir, Greg. Amen. Listen, I understand that people that don't that are not Christians have rights. But you don't have to stomp on our rights uh, either. We've got rights and uh, the right to kneel and pray. And, and the thing was, the team gathered around him from my understanding. And, of course, then he's leading the team. Well, that's at the team's choice. Amen. Speaking of high school football, we were talking today, and this is a this is an opportunity that we need to be praying for um, Sullivan East, who we we have Sullivan East students that come here. We have them from all different areas, Science Hill, all the way down to Greenville. But uh, Sullivan East has asked us for several years. They do a devotion the night before football games, and uh, they uh, we're scheduled to do it. In October, and we get to lead a devotion and feed the team. And what a great opportunity to share the gospel. And these boys hear it pretty regularly. But uh, we found out today that the football game, which is typically on a Friday night, that particular game that we're signed up for is on a Thursday. And so uh, I was talking to Josh, my son, and he was worried about that. And we need to see what we need to do. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, our youth are excited, and I said, our whole church will come. I said, we may have a worship time and a devotion time like never before. We do it on a Wednesday night. And so all of a sudden, uh, what we he first saw maybe as a stumbling block, I think he's excited about uh, the opportunity that we'll have. Pre-game meal the night before, so it'd be on Wednesday night. And so, uh, you know. That's the thing about us I've always loved about this church. We, we're we here. We're faithful. We, we come. We do pray. But when the opportunity presents itself to minister at a time when we might be in church, we don't have a bit of problem saying, well, let's take the church outside these four walls. And uh, I think that's exactly what we'll plan on doing on October the 12th. So I've already got Taylor on board, so. Y'all mark your calendars and be praying for that opportunity. Yes, I believe that's the Wednesday, 13th is when they play, which is a Thursday. Yes, sir. Well, we'll be glad to. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I always enjoy doing those things as well, so. You uh, you let me know. I can stop. I go through Jonesboro to get to Greenville sometimes. So that's wonderful. Any other prayer requests tonight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll be silly sixteen-year-olds. Yes, sir, Lou. Yes. Amen. Wonderful. 
And that's this Saturday? Second, I'm sorry. Well, that would be Saturday. Yeah, that's Saturday. That's coming right up. Amen. Amen. And you know, Mike and Kathy have been gone for the last couple of weeks. I think they've been traveling, but I know Kathy does some stuff with some veteran stuff, and I, I haven't gotten to talk to her an awful lot about it, but looks to be some, some quality ministry there. So y'all be praying for Kathy as well. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Any others? Sue Cox. Write that down. All right. Any others? Well, how many of you have unspoken requests? Let me know by just raising your hand. Amen. Well, let's gather around the altar tonight and uh, spend a few minutes praying, and then uh, I'm going to finish up at least tell you the four things that I didn't get to tell you last week, all right? Let's gather around.
praise the Lord. I could have just about let you stand up because this is uh, going to be quick tonight. Matthew chapter 28, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 28 where I preached Sunday. Thought you was going to have to hear that again. Verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. If you go on down to verses 14 15, it says, For if you forgive others their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. But if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive you your offenses. Four things I want you to see. First off, acknowledgement is the first step to forgiveness. Acknowledgement. Acknowledging where we are. Acknowledging that we need to be forgiven. Acknowledge that there is sin present. And acknowledge that there is no way that we can self-justify. The problem is, too many times when we recognize sin, we begin to justify why it was okay. Number two thing I want you to notice tonight trespasses are not categorized into big ones and small ones there's no big ones and small ones I find that most people that want to do that yours is big theirs is little James chapter 2 verse 10 that I read last week to you says if you're guilty in one area of the law you're, gu you're a law breaker that's just all there is to it we need to understand the greatness of the forgiveness we receive the fact of the matter is we want to think there's big sins and little sins. There's nothing but big sin. God doesn't wink at them. He doesn't think there's uh, anything cute about it. And all sin is equally bad to God. It cost his son his life. There are no little sins. They're all big. Third thing I want you to see tonight uh, is that we need to show grace like it's been shown to us. I had a preacher friend of mine who was talking about sitting in a room full of preachers. And a lot of these preachers, they were, they, the discussion started about who they would marry and who they wouldn't marry, who they'd perform ceremonies for. And, uh, you know, and I'll just tell you, I don't believe this. And the Bible says this about divorce and this. And, and they just, they, all these preachers are just, you know, they're really... Uh, throwing their chest out about where they stood and it, it rolled over into other things my preacher friend that was there said there was an old preacher that sat over and it kind of came his turn and it started to die down and he said you know one of these days I'm going to stand before God and I'm going to give an answer as to why I treated people the way I treated them and my answer is it going to be well God I just wanted to be tough because I knew you didn't and I, I wanted to stand up for you or will my answer be well Lord I just want to show them grace like you showed me you see in this verse it says as that not only means simultaneously or while he says as we forgive others that means in the same manner as Forgive me of my trespasses in the same manner that I forgive others. What if God forgives you in the same manner as you forgive others? It's not our place to judge, to accept forgiveness and not give forgiveness is selfish. I shared with you last week a parable that Jesus told about that. The thing is, grudges seem to sneak up on us even when we lay them down. Sometimes we have to lay them down daily at the cross and not pick them back up the fourth thing I want you to see the inability to forgive is a sin in itself and can I tell you it's one that I've had to struggle with I, I've, I've blamed it on being a Murray that it's hereditary it is hereditary it's being a human it's easy for us to carry those grudges but you know when we carry a grudge and we have anger at somebody over something it's like drinking poison hoping it kills them that's what it is they sleep good at night 
you might not. <laughs> this is why our forgiveness is contingent upon forgiving others because we are sinning when we don't forgive. Norman Vincent Peale said this, Resentment or grudges do no harm to the person against whom you hold these feelings, but every day and every night of your life they are eating at you. You see, all people are on common ground when it comes to the need for forgiveness. My brother just sent me a text. It's a terrible story. We, we've even kind of, we, we, I've picked at him a little bit about it, but he had a young man that worked for him for three years and always called in if he wasn't going to be there and up one day and didn't show up. killed his girlfriend was on the run got caught and you'd sit and it'd be real easy be real easy to say how sorry how low down he is and, 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 and we maybe wouldn't be wrong but we forget there was a preacher that I always looked up to uh, who said this he said you know the difference between you and the sorriest guy in prison. I said, what? I was waiting on some big story about grace and faith and being raised a Christian. He said, about that much. About that much. Paul put it this way. There but for the grace of God go I. All people are on common ground when it talks about needing forgiveness and holding a grudge puts you in the place of righteous superiority to that person. I'm a little better than you because I can hold a grudge against you. Holding a grudge minimizes the severity of your own sin. Have you ever known anybody that always liked to point out somebody else's? You see it You see it in school a lot, middle school. They want, when, the, when they have a deficiency and somebody picks on them, they begin, they divert it and they begin to pick on somebody else. See, that's what we do with sin. We can hide our own sins as long as we can maximize somebody else's. So, four things. Acknowledge and is the first step to forgiveness. Trespasses are not categorized into big and small. We need to show grace like it's been shown to us. And the inability to forgive is a sin. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name for the great time we had in prayer tonight. And we thank you that you've allowed us to come into your throne room to meet here together. And uh, Lord, we just pray we glorify you in all that we do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody needs to write that down. That's the shortest.